Let's go. Halftime chat. We have a lot of questions to get to today. Obviously, the poll question right now, should Garrett Nussmeyer start the second half? We welcome in Pegasus, Kevin, Music, LJ already hooked us up with the very nice Venmo, so obviously get your questions in. LJ wants to talk Garrett Nussmeyer. And look, if you want to talk about yards per play number, there's Baby Z right there. If you want to talk yards per play number, obviously the most important thing is to look at LSU's yards per play at 3.4 right now. McNeese is averaging 1.1 yards per play. Got to give it up to Max here. He's probably right. The MVPs are the first half to Claylon Roy and Mason Smith. You got to give the defensive tackles for LSU uh, a, a really huge upgrade based on their performance from last week. Obviously, uh, the LSU defensive ends have also played a lot better. So uh, overall, I, I would give the half a, a C plus. It obviously wasn't C+. great football. And look, if LSU didn't have Cade York, that would be a 14-0 to 0 half. So the bottom line is it wasn't a good half for LSU, but at this point, what did you expect? Okay, what did you expect? Blitz pickup has not been as good as it was last week, uh, sadly, and McNeese's blitzes aren't as exotic, and they obviously don't have the athletes that LSU has, okay? And look, this is an FCS team, and LSU is really, really struggling to move people, And it it was really hard to see LSU just blowing this team out, but essentially they kind of sort of are doing that on score, but with the actual play, it is uh, not been that great. So to Max's Super Chat, obviously, thank you so much. You know, this is essentially where I am right now. Um, Michael's right. This is a very boring team right now. Uh, (laughs) Let's go to Trey here. He just says, man. (laughs) <laughs> Nick, I have to say, uh, Nick, you're right on. And thanks again, Trey, for the super chat. It always, man, you are always hooking us up with some really good support. Uh, Nick's right on. I'm a big Jare Jenkins guy. That was brutal. That was so brutal. I, my heart sank. Um, and here's the thing. If you drop one pass, you're going to the bench, unless you're Kayshawn Butte. Uh, That was really pathetic, though, from Jare Jenkins. And I, I've been Jerry Jenkins' biggest fan. He actually ran a really good route there, did a good job sitting in that zone. But, you know, obviously the big question here is Max Johnson. What do you guys think? Does Garrett Nussmeyer need to sit to, uh, or to, to start the second half? There is an overwhelming amount of you that says yes. So uh, very interesting. Yeah, hang on to the ball. Exactly. Um Music says start the coaching search now, okay? Uh, So I listened to Ed Orgeron's halftime comments. Obviously, he's not happy with the line of scrimmage. What I could see next half is uh, LSU trying to establish that run, Uh, but we'll see. I think LSU's about to come out and really blow the brakes off McNeese. They're not a really good football team at all. They're also not really a well-coached football team. I was really shocked at how conservative Frank Wilson got when they were having some success in the passing game. And honestly, LSU is running the same defense they basically ran against UCLA with a few new wrinkles. There is room to throw the football. Um, I, I'm just shocked that McNeese is just pounding the football here. Uh, this is Cody Orgeron in his homecoming. Let him lose the game for you. Um, you know, uh, Cole Taylor thing is very interesting, Esteban. Jack Best just needs to be the guy and let him stay on the field at all times. Um, but I don't want to get into uh, coaching rumors right now. We're in the middle of a game. Obviously, that's better for a Tuesday live stream. Let me ask you this. If you were to grade Max Johnson's first half on a scale of 1 to 10 – what would you give his first half right now? He was 13 of 19 for 104 yards, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. Here's the thing about Max. Uh, I, I've always said this about him. He's not an elite athlete, okay? Um, he, he's just not. He doesn't have an elite arm. He doesn't have elite legs. Um, and when you are that type of player, 
experience really matters. Anticipation really matters. And sometimes it looks as if Max just doesn't have that twitch. And as Diggo says, this is McNeese. Uh, this is not a good football team. Um, you know, I, I thought McNeese could have been a little more aggressive in spots when they got around the 50 yard line. Um, but you know, teach your own, they are McNeese for a reason. It was interesting to see Miles Brennan throwing pregame. So um, let's see. Throw the ball to BTJ. It is interesting that he has not gotten any targets yet. I'll tell you this. Jack Besh looks really good. Um, this is where this is how I feel too, Jonah. Once again, the best way to get your question, and I know we're getting a bunch of different questions, Max panics. It does seem like the game is moving a little too fast for him. Um, so, you know, for for me, I I, I can see why you say he panics. Uh, for me, I, I also feel uh, the offensive line play could be better. But you are starting two new tackles, right? Uh, we thought we were going to see Garrett Dellinger start the offensive line that we've seen so far. Xavier Hill with Ed Ingram, Liam Shanahan, Marlon Martinez, um, and at right tackle. I don't know. I'm getting the guys jumbled up now. Still, there's three new starters on the offensive line, and they aren't playing that well. So uh, we'll 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 see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, this is a good question here from WAP. Why is Max regress? He's, he's seen more poise in the swamp last year. Part of it is Max didn't overthink things. He was also just way more efficient in the red zone. Now, the throw to Trey Palmer was excellent, but it was also wide open. Also, we are a little fortunate that we didn't get a cleaner replay of that catch. I thought he didn't catch it. It looked like it was a good catch to me. Still, I'm glad that the referee was blocking that one angle. Um, so, yeah, it, it's interesting. Mike Jones actually did get a snap, uh, a few snaps. There was a reason why he was third string last year. True. You know, here's the thing about Max Johnson. is He's not going to blow you away with anything. He's not going to be, um, you know, a quarterback that's going to put up cartoonish numbers. Uh, he, he's just solid in every aspect of his game. And once again, this is just year two for him. It really is. Um, you know, I I, I kind of like this. You know, these three have been uh, uh, LSU's, or these four have been LSU's best receivers, minus Dre. Uh, up to this point, uh, the number two experienced option has just not shown himself. And right now, that's Trey Palmer. He's been the best. Uh, BTJ is getting snaps. He's just not getting targets. Um, it is interesting that you bring up Antoine Sampa out that boot. Uh, a, a friendly reminder about Antoine Sampa that's very interesting is, uh, well, Philip Webb actually got some snaps. I don't know if you guys saw that. I saw big number 39 out there, which was, you know, very interesting to see. Uh, Philip Webb to me is a guy that's obviously he's very athletic. Uh, he's a guy that, of course, w when, you know, we got him, I, I was really shocked that he actually ended up choosing LSU. So, yeah, you know, uh, we'll, we'll we'll see if Philip Webb gets more snaps. Uh, why is Todd Harris not dressed? That's a good question, Pierce. Honestly, guys have just been getting hurt so much. It's kind of hard to just, you just kind of be like, okay, he's just hurt, right? But now LSU's having, and, and Todd's probably just hurt knowing his injury history, but LSU also just has guys out with academic issues. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, Deion Smith did get a catch there at the end. Also, I saw Alex Adams getting some snaps at wide receiver. So one thing that we suggested last week was LSU shrink their wide receiver rotation. They have done the opposite. Actually, more guys have played. And once again, this is without Malik Neighbors and John Trey Kirkland. I do think it's a little counterintuitive to play that many guys. Um, so we'll see. 
Cam Lewis did have a good half. I was happy to see that. Um, back up the money. Uh, once again, we're not talking about coaching rumors right now. Uh, Zachary says we're missing 20 players and it's showing. Yeah, and here's the thing about that, Zach, is that is true, but you also have to keep in mind this is an FCS roster. Obviously, if you you know, if LSU was playing Central Michigan, um, I, I'd feel a little bit better about this half. Now, McNeese has a bunch of transfers and a bunch of these two and three star Louisiana players. Obviously, these are a lot of the teammates of the four and five stars who actually went to LSU. It's weird. Derek Singley is matched up against his high school teammate, Jamal Pettigrew, is out there. So, yeah. Uh, this is interesting uh, to keep it note. We'll talk more about it later in the post game. Uh, the rest of the SEC is actually looking pretty good. Ole Miss, Arkansas, Texas A&M lost their quarterback today, but uh, they're still very strong defensively. Um, so, yeah. And and this is basically it right here from Jonah. And it's not just our backups and third stringers should be better than McNeese's starters. Your coaches should be better than McNeese's coaches. You should be able to still out-scheme them and out-maneuver them. And right now the defense is the only one holding up their end of the bargain. Uh, the offense right now is just not playing that well. Um, Ty Davis Price, five carries for 28 yards, really only had that one 21-yarder. I would like to see Armani Goodwin get a few more carries. Uh, I've always thought Armani Goodwin was the most talented back in this backfield, even though he is a true freshman in the injury. he, he got he, I, I don't think it's smart to play him if on his first carry. Yes, he did go for 21 yards, but this is a guy who has injury history, and he did come up gimp. Um, so, yeah, I, I do think, um, once again, no, no coaching questions right now. We'll get into it in the post game. As Christian points out, it should be 28 to zero minimum. In actuality, uh, the score really is just 14 to zero, right? Uh, because Cade York has a cartoon. I mean, he kicked a 55 yard field goal. There's a lot of NFL kickers who can't kick a 55 yarder. Um, that was really impressive. And it wasn't just the fact that he makes these kicks. It's the height he gets on the kicks. Um, most 50 plus yarders are line drives. So it's not just the kicks. It's the quality of the kicks. And on top of that, you, you have to keep this in mind as well, as far as uh, LSU is concerned. I do think one thing to look for in the second half, not only Garrett Nussmeyer, but will LSU give the football more to these younger wide receivers? Will the younger wide receivers get most of the reps? So we'll see. We'll see. Um, Cage is the best player on the team, period. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I know, Reed. It's sad. It's really sad. Uh, I'm really, really sad uh, about that drop. It was a good route, though, but a bad drop. Uh, you know what? That that was pretty interesting as well, Paris, as far as uh, LSU's management towards, towards the end there. Not giving Max an opportunity to throw and just run the football there was very interesting. This is uh, the thing uh, from Tim. Where is the energy? I, I do like what I see from the LSU defensive line, but I also thought McNeese running a, 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 a running back draw on third and eight was one of the worst calls in the first half, and that's what ended up getting LSU that fumble. This is a good question here from Jonah. Once again, I'm getting so many questions right now. The best thing to do, obviously, is uh, cash uh, Venmo Cash App Super Chat. Let me get as many as I can, though, here. Uh, do we come out and work the running game to show improvements, or do we go out there and try to work the new wide receivers and get Max more reps? Yeah, you know, uh, once again, Jonah, a lot of this is going to come down to uh, is Garrett Nussmeyer going to come out and start the second half? Uh, I think I think Ed Orgeron is going to want to run the football. I think he is really concerned about uh, his guys' inability to start – um, uh, to, to uh, the inability to move guys. Um, you know, uh, let's see. 
Uh, we're only two games in. I do think the communication needs to be a little cleaner. Uh, let's see here. Do you think LSU still has a hangover from 2019? That's obviously you know a little too deep of a question to ask right now um, as far as that is concerned. What I do think, and we're going to dive deeper into this, I do think something happened on that 2019 team that we're not talking enough about. But I obviously just want the live chats tonight to just be about the game and what comes from it. Um, so, yeah. Um, there isn't a player in McNeese that can make the LSU roster. I mean, that's probably one or two. But, yeah, I mean, you're right. You, you still should be boat racing this team. You you really should. Um so, yeah, you know, this is obviously the big question here. We really have to run the ball these next two games. Yeah, you know, you, you do need to establish some running game. I also think LSU, if Max Johnson is going to be the quarterback, I think they should evaluate whether or not going under center is better for this team. I don't think this offensive line is athletic enough to block in five-man protections consistently, especially when we go up against Texas A&M's, DeMarvin Leal's, and all those guys. Cody, thank you so much uh, for the generous super chat here. At least the defense has improved a bit. Starting to lose face in Max Johnson. Max Johnson, get the ball to the Nuss bus. So it is interesting. You look at Gary Nussmeyer, highest level of Texas high school football you possibly can get, highest completion percentage out of any senior quarterback that has ever come to LSU. And that's really impressive considering the competition he was going up against. I like Garrett Nussmeyer a lot. I actually think this McNeese game um, lines up well for him to really light them up because their defensive linemen aren't going to be as athletic. And Nuss is a little bit more of a playmaker. And even though he was going up against backups, Nuss did have better stats in the scrimmages um, uh, in the fall. And yes, he had some really bad interceptions in the spring game, but he also made more wow plays in the spring game than Max Johnson. So it, it, it is very interesting. I, I do think Nuss needs to play, though. I think at some point you have to let the locker room see him if he had if he has been dominating as much as he's been dominating in practice. So, yeah, Mike Jones did play. So, yeah, I I do agree with you Cody. Max uh uh Garrett Nussmeyer should get the opportunity to get some snaps and to end our poll here out of 145 of you um let me see here. Let's see what the final numbers were. Nuss Three-fourths of you, says Garrett Nussmeyer, um, should start the second half. Let's see. Wait a minute, Carter. You told me Nuss should not be the starting quarterback when I told you he was our best QB. Well, I'm not saying he should be the starting quarterback. I'm saying he he should get the opportunity to play some in the next half. Let's see here. Uh, Max is starting. Has the second half started? I, I I don't have the stream, or I I I don't have my TV on. I like to focus in on you. Um, Arkansas is three hundred nine rushing yards on Texas. Well, let's hope we start getting that soon from Brad Davis. Uh, Roy and Mason Smith should never leave the field. Yeah, true. They do need to start. If you want to run the four three the way you want to run it, I think they should start getting. Far more snaps. Let's go to Rain here. I am fuming this man. O says he wants to build a championship program. Meanwhile, he has hired two of his sons as offensive analysts. Meanwhile, Saban hires former head coaches. It is interesting, right? And honestly, you look throughout the NFL, when people hire their sons to be on the staff, sometimes you do get a Kyle Shanahan, like a super coach. And then sometimes you get some really really bad coaches and analysts. Uh, once again, I, I don't know what their roles are on the team, uh, but yeah. Game's back on. Okay, I'll answer a few more questions before uh, we get back to the game here. Uh, Max needs all the reps. Uh, 
Oh, I just got the EPA per play numbers. Yeah, they're on my stream. They're getting ready to kick off here. It's starting. Okay. Um, come on over, guys. If you want to chat during the second half, click this link right here. Okay. This link right here, we're going to be chatting in the chat room. So come on over, and I am in there in the chat, so come on over, and uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in to the halftime live stream. So Max Johnson is starting uh, the second half, so we will see you after the game. So go on ahead, click that link, save yourself a reminder, and uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Hopefully uh, we end up crushing them. I know some of you are hoping LSU wins this game by 40 points. Or more. <laughs> we'll see you in the post game, okay? Go Tigers. Let's go. <laughs> 